Well, right now, as you watch the Stanley Cup playoffs, you are privileged to watch Guy Lafleur of the Canadians, a man many say is the finest hockey player in the world today. He is tremendous when it comes to scoring goals and lighting the red light. Now look at the many talents of Guy Lafleur. And then, jusqu'à la fleur, belle fin, and then it's done. Course, it's a course of bien, it's a plus spectacular, one of the plus beaux de l'année. It was all there in those moments of exquisite anticipation. The acceleration up the right wing, those smooth, powerful strides, and of course, the hair. In the days before hockey players became anonymous helmeted warriors, blown back as if by a Hollywood wind machine. No one called it a flow in those days, but his was the granddaddy of them all, suggestive of only one thing, speed. Looking at the decade of the 70s, I don't think there was another player, uh, a skater for sure. Uh, obviously, Geese, a forward, was number one in that era. Lafleur had become a star in his home province before he became a teenager, dominating the famous Quebec Pee Wee tournament three years in a row. He graduated to the junior Quebec Rampart, and in his final remarkable season, won the Memorial Cup and scored 130 goals in 62 regular season games. From the Quebec Ramparts, Guy Lafleur. The first practice I saw him with, with Montreal Canadian, I said, wow, what a player that's going to be. Lafleur won his first of five Stanley Cups with the Habs in 1973. But it was the 1974-75 season that represented his real breakthrough. The first of six consecutive seasons in which he scored 50 or more goals and ascended to the level of stardom to which he had long seemed destined. I think for any kid growing up uh, in the 70s in Montreal uh, and to see the Montreal Canadiens win Stanley Cup after Stanley Cup and having Guy the best player in the world and, and uh, uh, the excitement that he brought to the game uh, he was my idol and, and uh, always wanted to be like him, play like him, and, and uh, do some of the plays that he did, and, and uh, certainly enjoyed uh, watching him in the 70s. That collection of Canadians won four consecutive Stanley Cups between 1976 and 1979. Lafleur led the league in scoring for three of those seasons, and twice won the Hart Trophy as the league's most valuable player. He had finally earned his place among the immortals. It ended badly for Lafleur in Montreal. The Habs dynasty was long finished by 1985, and Lafleur's skills had significantly eroded. Jacques Lemaire was coaching the team, and his defense-first philosophy was antithetical to Lafleur's attacking nature. He asked to be traded, but general manager Serge Savard knew that the fans would never forgive him if he did. Left with what he believed was no alternative, Lafleur retired 19 games into the season. He finished and remains the all-time leading point scorer in Canadians' history. Well, I never uh, doubted in my mind that I was not able to score till 40 or 50 goal again. It was tough enough to uh, uh, read the paper or heard people talking, uh, when are you gonna get out of your slump, things like that, so uh, that's why I decided to retire. That's one of the reasons why. By the time he returned for a late career swan song with the New York Rangers and Quebec Nordique three years later, Lafleur had already been inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame. The only others on that list, Gordie Howe and Mario Lemieux. But for flashes, he was no longer the player burned into so many memories. Still, if you closed your eyes and used your imagination, you could conjure him up. You could remember those nights at the Forum when he got the puck and flew down the wing and the crowd rose expecting magic. <laughs> 